That was exciting. I think it's also exciting to see my name this big on a huge screen. I don't think I've ever seen a bigger screen than that. Anyway, thank you all for coming to tonight's talk, and thank you to the MIP TV royalty for inviting us here, and um, we're certainly humbled uh, to, to recognize that we've won this prestigious award on behalf of the 40,000 people who work at Mattel. This really does mean a lot to us. You know, I don't say that lightly, that we're in this sort of interesting time at Mattel, arguably kind of a media revolution. Um, and, I, you know, this is a big word, media and revolution, and, and I don't say it um, simply because Mattel was actually built originally on content and media, and it's something that most people don't really understand, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about it to you. And while Mattel is 70 years old and has a storied history, which I'll, I'll share a little bit more about you, with, it, with you about it, I believe thoroughly that Mattel's best days are actually ahead of us. And I will tell you more about that and what actually brought us together today. So how did Mattel start? Mattel started in a garage. We are that American great story that started in a garage 70 years ago in Southern California. And this was a time and a place in California where amazing things were happening in music, in technology, in toys, and of course, in media. At the same time, if you noticed above that garage, it said Mattel Creations. That was the name of our company when it started. It was inventing revolutionary new ways for kids to play, while others were also developing revolutionary new mediums of television. Mattel's founders, Ruth and Elliot Handler, they were visionaries, and they understood that in a world where kids were increasingly engaged by media, toys would have to tell engaging stories to create the wonder and the magic if it were to matter to kids. The handlers were particularly inspired by how their friend back then, Walt Disney, was creating a new kind of character-based family entertainment. The handlers bet their entire company, their whole budget, on advertising in this wild new alternative form of media called television. And these were unproven, these TV shows. So at the time, the DNA of our company had this amazing sort of approach to media and this acceptance of risk. Now, just as Disney focused on strong characters and dramatic storytelling, Mattel created the first television advertising for kids, rooted in kid-targeted stories that brought these toys to life. Recognizing that television and whatever evolved from it represented both Mattel's present and future, Mattel creations have always been content optimized. These were open-ended brands that could continuously evolve and live in a wide range of environments, scenarios, and narratives. So if Mattel was such a media pioneer back 70 years ago and in the day, why aren't we considered a global leader in media today? The short answer is that over time, we became really comfortable with our success and repeated what worked, rather than fearing the status quo. We essentially devolved into a packaged goods company that made toys, losing that entrepreneurial creative adventure that started the company. The 30-second commercial for kids that was so innovative at the time, it was short-form content when we invented it 63 years ago, became so much a part of our culture that we could not look beyond it. Our media became focused on tonnage rather than innovation. Many other aspects of our business fell behind, and Mattel essentially lost its way for a little while. Now, a couple years ago, I was invited back to Mattel to help them rethink and reinvent everything that we do and continue to break the mold and create the next chapter of innovation as a leading company again. In order to do this, how do you start? How do you start to think about reinventing a legacy company? Well, you start by understanding what made you great in the first place. 
Because to see the way forward, I believe that you have to understand what made you great in the beginning. Now, I knew our founders had built the company on great brands that were designed for storytelling, open-ended imagination, and continuous evolution that inspired kids and created wonder as they played. And a recognition that kids, even at that time, were on the forefront of adopting new media. As a result, that was where we needed to start to think about where we were gonna take our brands and embrace risk and really understand our consumer and where the landscape was moving. Now, ironically, I talked about this when I last spoke at MIP TV. This was about eight years ago. And I believe it even more today because the content revolution that you are all in right now, we are collectively shaping every day as we move forward. Media is the facet of play where kids are rapidly becoming both consumer and the end user. And because this is the area where kids are most in control, they're able to discover, make choices. Media is becoming more and more influential over other components, and particularly in toys. The reason seems much more obvious now than when I talked about it in 2008. Kids are naturally suited to a media-intensive world. They are unaware of limitations, and less conscious of barriers. They are natural hackers. They're eager and able to find solutions. They are passionate about media and about storytelling. And today, they can curate their own experiences and configure their own worlds. Despite what we may want them to do in play, they can create their own world. This is the first generation of kids who think and play like producers. They expect their toys to come to life in every dimension, on TV, online, in apps, in games, in theme parks, in movies. That's just for starters. And that's creating a whole new universe of opportunity for Mattel and for everyone in this room. Because the dynamic world kids live in today are good for brands. They're good for you, they're good for developers, they're good for us, and I sincerely believe they're good for kids and creativity in general. When kids choose toys today, they're essentially casting characters for all the stories that they can imagine, whether they emanate from content with ready-made stories or are original characters where stories are created by kids themselves. Now at Mattel, our creations, they include both. You know them well. Barbie, Fisher Price, Hot Wheels, American Girl, Monster High, Thomas, He-Man, and many, many others. But I also believe that before a brand can fully capture all the creative potential of the media represented here today, the brands must be healthy and relevant, and its products, they must matter and be desirable. And to be totally honest and candid, Many of our brands weren't ready until now. For the past couple of years, we've been focused on making our brands and our products relevant and exciting again. And while content was not our primary focus, it played an important role. Let me give you a few examples, of course, beginning with Barbie. Now, this is a brand that has always reflected culture. Barbie recently made dramatic changes to better reflect the wonderfully diverse world that girls see today. We introduced new Barbie dolls featuring eight skin tones, 14 different facial sculpts, 18 different eye colors, and even more varied hairstyles, hair colors, and fashions. We then approached technology and we said, what's an insight? The insight that kids, they love Barbie, it's her best friend but how come she can't talk back? I have conversations with her, I tell her everything, and she doesn't talk back. Now, in a world where we live, where we can pick up our device and talk to it, and it talks back, why can't Barbie talk back? So we took that risk, and we developed Hello Barbie that finally answered the number one girl's request to have an interactive conversation with their doll. We also recently took probably the largest, riskiest, most exciting step in the context of diversity, and for the first time ever, 
Barbie's figure and the dimensions changed. You have to be living on another planet to not have been recognizing that Barbie's body has evolved. We have tall, we have petite, we have curvy, joining the classic original Barbie. These subtleties, these cultural connections of listening to the consumer, taking the risk, has created unbelievable pop culture sensation and relevance for the brand. Let's take a look at what happened. It's important for Barbies to look different. You know, like the, the real people in the world. Pretty amazing. By the way, I did have an outfit change. So we recently took this diversity to a whole new level and we've now celebrating heroines, modern heroines, everyday heroines today, Abby Wambach and Ava DuVernay, who have transcended stereotypes and inspired the world over and over. And later this year, we're gonna do it again with a doll honoring the American Ballet Theater's extraordinary prima ballerina, Misty Copeland. Our partnership with Moschino, one of the most recognized fashion brands in the world, created Barbie content, and for the first time ever, we featured a boy in a commercial. Innovations like these brought new relevance and attention to the Barbie brand that hopefully one or more of these touched your life. But for those of you that know our brand and frankly love our brand, you know that the brand is much more deeper and has a connection to aspiring girls to believe that they can be anything they wanna be. Now, somewhere along the line of our history, we started to lose that connection with millennial moms. People were talking about Barbie, but in most cases they were talking about it negatively, so we were addressing it with ethnicities, with figure, with various different ways to do it, but how are we going to express the value of play to moms about Barbie? So we reached out and we created entirely new content and shared it with moms in a new and very exciting way over social media. And here are the results of the spot. Take a look. My name is Gwyneth, and I'll be your professor today. And I will be talking about the brain. Hi. Hello, I'm your veterinarian today. You're kidding. Nope, I'm Dr. Brooklyn. See? Okay, doctor. Oh, here, let me see. Good morning, everyone. I'm your new coach. My name is Maddie. Nice to meet you. I had the most fantastic day in the office. You'll never believe what happened. We got that new business I wanted. You ever seen him fly? Have you seen him what? Fly? No. My cat can fly. Okay. The dog's brain can't think as much as the human's brain because there's no high school for the dog. <laughs> this is Peter, the Triceratops. Peter is one years old. The T-Rex, Sally, is 1,252 years old. <laughs> Up like a unicorn. Higher, higher. I've been to New York, Transylvania, Pennsylvania. We can think and do lots of 
stuff with our brain. Now, does anybody know how big the brain is? Anybody? Sophia. It is medium. Medium. Very good. I could see. Uh, thank you. You know, I've, I've, um, I've obviously seen that spot a few times, um, and I, I, never, I never get bored of it. It's, it's innovations like these that bring new relevance and attention to Barbie. It's um, an exciting time for us, and the results of these have been spectacular. It's created a global media sensation, frankly, that money just can't buy. I, I don't know any other brand transformation that's either taking place now or took place that gets the cover of New York Times Magazine, the cover of Time Magazine, Financial Times, Vogue, just to name a few. It's extraordinary. It's new relevance and momentum that the world now expects from the Barbie brand. And because relevance must be cultivated daily, the immediacy of media and content will play an even greater role in managing this brand and all of our brands going forward. Now, Fisher-Price is another great example where we're employing content to bring new relevance to a classic brand. We began by reclaiming the brand equities, the earliest days of Fisher-Price, where it was a leading early childhood development company. Its timeless promise is even more relevant to today to millennial moms than it was to moms when the company first started back in 1930. But you all know, engaging millennials at perhaps their busiest, most sleepless, and distracted life as new parents would require us to completely rethink how do we express what is Fisher Price? And importantly, how do we connect with them at this most special and precious moment in their life? What's more important than their child? And how does Fisher Price extend itself as a relationship brand? Not just about product, but about understanding that actually Fisher Price helps you create the best possible start in their lives. And whatever you wish for them, we need to be part of. So we created content and reached out to them with a new message and a social approach that engaged an emotional connection to the Fisher-Price brand. Let's take a look at that. We'll take care of the rest. I hope you always feel this loved. Nice, right? So we followed up that media with a revolutionary lineup of product that not only reaches the aspirations of millennial parents, but complements their busy lives. From this groundbreaking new STEM for preschoolers, what we call a Coda Pillar, it's a toy that toddlers can actually learn programming and rediscover how this can move in a myriad of ways. To what I think is absolutely a brilliant idea, and I know there are going to be moms out there who understand this brilliant idea. So based on insights, one of the biggest challenges, particularly many millennial moms, was that high chair is dirty. I can't possibly clean it. We've created the first high chair, which can be completely disabled and cleaned in the dishwasher. 
Now, that's a big innovation. Now, these type of products and exceptional firsts, they are naturally talked about. So to give millennials a platform to share and create content, we've launched something called a film by you. It's an online hub where parents can share their milestone moments in their child's development hosted by Fisher Price. It's a level of connection and engagement that can't be accomplished with product alone. And we look forward to continuing to deepen our connection and relationships with parents with this brand with a broad range of new and exciting content that will continue to extend the emotional connection that we can create with a brand like Fisher Price. Now, then there's a brand like Hot Wheels. Now, this is a rapidly rising star in our portfolio, in large part due to the imagination and the power of our fans. Hot Wheels is evolving from a simple car and track system to a content-intensive play system. And YouTube has become our lab for a whole new universe and user-generated content that this year is featuring over 200 pieces of inspiring original videos that encourage fans to share their own Hot Wheels epic stories. It's community building at its most fun. We used to prescribe how kids play with Hot Wheels. Now we're reaching out and asking them to share with us how do they play with Hot Wheels. And the results are pretty amazing. Let's take a look at that. Build some track. Yeah. This entire thing is our engine. Yeah. Amazing when, when, thank you so much. Thank you. From going from Fisher Price where you're crying to Barbie where you're laughing and then Hot Wheels where you're geared up. Anyway, with, with our ever-evolving Hot Wheels brand, we've demonstrated also how nearly every intellectual property can be Hot Wheeled, making the world's most favorite characters and mobile fast, and in this case, obviously, the Darth Vader car from Star Wars. So I'm sure you could see and understand the amount of possibilities that we have with a brand like Hot Wheels is endless and inspirational. It's an amazing brand, and one which content and storytelling and entertainment partners are being elevated to a whole new level. Now, while we've been reinventing these brands one by one, and we have many of them in our portfolio, we've also been carefully studying the media landscape. We're evaluating our resources, our talent. We're carefully considering what's working for others, what's working for us, what's not working, what's emerging, and where can we best enhance and innovate. And now we're translating those insights into action. We've recognized all of our global media and content resources into one powerful capability that we call Mattel Creations. It's perfectly reflecting our new perspective on content as well as a fitting homage to the heritage, the origins of that original content revolution back 70 years ago in that garage. We brought in some incredible new talent to lead this capability. Notably, Catherine, Mattel's new chief content officer, a new position who many of you might know and certainly will get to know. And Catherine is championing Mattel's new content revolution, opening new doors, thinking differently, and creating possibilities in content, media, and digital across our entire portfolio globally. And Christopher Keenan, who's heading up all of our content development and production, who reports into Catherine. 
Christopher is leading the reinvention of some of our most beloved preschool brands, including Angelina Ballerina, Bob the Builder, Barney, Barbie, Hot Wheels, all of our brands under one creative voice and one global content group. Now, while most of our plans are clearly confidential and can't be discussed in a forum like this, I could share a few things about Mattel's vibrant future. Now, first, we are making our consumer our top priority, connecting them to the unique purpose of each one of our brands more directly and meaningfully. Each brand has a prescription and is different from each other. And we're inviting our fans to inspire us and co-create with our brands. Second, we're approaching content holistically. There are a myriad of ways to engage with kids and tell branded stories today, and new ones are emerging constantly. We want to employ any and all that serve the brand strategy, employing proven vehicles in new ways and experimenting constantly with new forms just as our founders did. Third, we're looking across our entire portfolio for opportunities to connect our brands to each other and, of course, to the journey of childhood. And fourth, we want to continuously discover new ways to extend our content beyond what's familiar, beyond long-form TV formats and animation models, and to embrace risk associated with this new frontier. Now, in addition, I want to make it easier and more exciting and desirable for you all to work with us. In the past couple of years, we've made being partner of choice in our category a top priority. And I hope that some of you have experienced or at least heard Mattel is much more collaborative and advantageous than ever before. Our motivations are not a secret. We want to work with the best and we want their best work because we know that that will make our company and our brands more successful. For example, we've just formalized a partnership with DHX to develop and produce innovative episodic content across a wide range of global platforms. We've also initiated a long-term relationship with Nine Story to relaunch two of the most iconic preschool brands, Yes, Barney, and Angelina Ballerina. And we are very fortunate to have incredibly long legacy creative partnerships with entertainment companies such as Disney, Warner Brothers, Universal, Sony, now Amazon Studios and DreamWorks. And we are very excited about what we're working on with these companies and many more in traditional and non-traditional ways. Now, that's just some of our recent news and a taste of what's yet to come. It is truly a very big and exciting moment and thrilling for me to sit amongst all of you in the context of your creativity in your fields of media and content and digital and be part of this new and exciting world. And I hope that many of you will join the Mattel constellation of talent that's going to continue to create this legendary company's future. I thank you so much for all the partnership that we have and hopefully many more going forward. We're incredibly honored, again, to receive this recognition as Brand of the Year. And as I said, I, I really do believe, and I know I speak for the many people in our, in our company in 55 countries and offices all around the world, that we are just getting started. And greatness is right around the corner. So thank you so much for your attention. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. I'm Anna Karagati, the Group Editorial Director of World Screen. And Richard, that, those clips were a, I just took a trip down memory lane, back <laughs> to when I was five. Good. And got my first Barbie, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. And then I just relived my son's addiction to Hot Wheels and how we would find them everywhere in the house except in the buckets where he was supposed to keep them. Mm, buckets are important. And, uh, and my daughter, uh, daughter's love of Barbie, which continued on. And I was just Googling all the toy. I can't believe how much she had. And it's interesting. She's going off to college in August and we're trying to rearrange her room, saying, what are you getting rid of? I swear to God, you're not touching my Barbies. Mm -hmm. So there's that, there's that connection that keeps on in the years. But children today, even very little ones, 
are really quick to adopt new technologies. They, they don't know what it is they're handling. They want their beloved characters and they want to see the stories. So how is Mattel providing beloved brands and characters on digital platforms and portable devices? Because as you said, you want to move yeah. beyond the traditional television. So I, you know, I think I, I spoke a little bit about this, but specifically, you know, kids are the early adopters. I mean, they, they do incredible things with what, whatever uh, it may be, whether it's a phone or digital or computer. I mean, they're incredibly savvy in the context of today's world and technology. And it's incredibly important for companies like ours that's about traditional play that we integrate our content into storytelling on digital medium in new content creations, and that ultimately is what you know, we're, we're goaling ourselves to do, and, and be where our consumer is. That's essentially, and not, it's not just Mattel brands. I think any brand today needs to be where their consumers are, and their consumers are everywhere. It's platform agnostic. Right. And it's interesting, well, if you've been on a plane or to any restaurant with little children, you know they usually have a small screen in front of yes. them. But even the grocery store and the carts, you see the children or in cars. I mean, mm -hmm. children love to, they, they want to extend that connection they have with their favorite character into their own life. Yep. And certainly Fisher Price does that beautifully. Yeah, with, with well, we're, we're trying, we're doing a lot of that. And I, and I think as parents out there, you know, there's, there's sort of a, uh, the, the beauty and the beast of technology. It's incredibly engaging, it's exciting, it can be incredibly uh, creative, and at the same time, it's also concerning. And I think we're at, we're at an interesting place where we have to value open-ended play and spark kids' imaginations with just sort of the thinking that some of our toys do, but at the same time, we've got to be on those screens. Right. We've got to be telling compelling stories. And so we think about it as one holistic approach to engaging our consumer but there's still the connection to the physical doll and the physical car and the physical all the rest. Absolutely. Because they want to touch it and keep it with them and take yep. it to bed. And yep. Yep. So, so Barbie, as I said, um, I'm not just saying this because I'm speaking to you. I honestly remember my first one, and I won't divulge the year because I don't want to date myself, but it was one of the first ones. Okay. She had uh, the ponytail and the bangs, mm -hmm. and it was a blue-gray blue dress. I still remember. And, and my parents didn't have a whole lot of money, so of course, you know, Mattel came out with Francine and Skipper and everybody, Midge yeah. and everybody else. And I had to have good grades in order to get those. But, but amazing how the connection with that doll carries on. I still remember it today. And as I said, my, my, my daughter adores them. How, can you give us a little, can you take us behind the scenes a little bit? And, and how did the thinking come about to, to give us today the different versions of Barbie that we see? Uh, you know, look, there, there, there's a lot of secret sauce behind the Barbie brand, and, and it's incredibly um, um, an exciting time for us with the brand as well. But make no, no doubt about it, it's very difficult to keep an 11 and a half inch fashion doll relevant for 57 years. Not trying to okay, give you a secret just away, me. but okay. <laughs> um, you know, part of Barbie's history, if you if you actually look back at it, is she was always a perfect reflection of what was happening in fashion and pop culture. And if you look at Barbies over time, she's actually a really interesting historic way of looking at what was fashion, what was going on in culture, what were women's issues. You know, Barbie was the first astronaut, she was the first president, she was the first, we tried to aspire at that particular time, girls to imagine that through their imagination and drive, they could be anything. And, and that was really true in the context of what our founders created. What we've done today isn't necessarily so brilliant, really. It's just embracing the DNA of the brand and looking at the history of it and saying, what makes Barbie relevant today? Well, today girls are growing up believing that, that they can be anything. Many of them are. And she needs to start to look like women look today. Absolutely. And women look differently today. They're, kids are looking at multicultural ethnicities, sizes, various different ways. And so part of Barbie's evolution in the context of what we knew was risky but important was to evolve in terms of what do girls look at and aspire to today. And I think as we move forward with the brand, it's not only going to be continuously about inspiring girls, by the way, and boys, to imagine that they can be anything, we'll start to think about, well, what can they do with the power of their imaginations? How can they change the world in the context of engaging social media? And does Barbie become a conduit in terms of messaging and help kids not only imagine what they can be, but ultimately help them accomplish what can they do? 
perhaps. That's an exciting new chapter I think you'll all hear about as the brand moves forward. Absolutely. I think that might be the key to Barbie. I mean, I was painfully shy as a child, and Barbie said and did mm -hmm. what I couldn't imagine doing or saying. And mm -hmm. I think that carried generations go on, and, and, and fashions change, and culture changes, but I think that connection remains. I hope so. So you're here in Cannes, and uh, in front of a huge uh, um, array of producers who may want to work with Mattel. Do you, do you have a, a message for internet, international content creators? Uh, look, I, you know, as I said, we're, we're, we're not shy. Um, and we, we certainly can't do what we do on our own. I, I think those days are, are long gone at Mattel. We are embracing creativity not only in our own house, but with open arms out in the community. And I, I mean it when I say it. I, you know, we put as one of our most important strategic goals of the company to be best in class partners. And that doesn't mean just the output, it also means the input. And so we're wildly welcoming new ideas, new thought processes, new ways to think, and leveraging talent out there to continue to build our legendary portfolio. And it may be working on one of our brands, or it might be inventing a whole new brand. The capabilities that we have as a company, I think, are largely untapped. You know, the, the idea of what we can do at Mattel with the resources that we have and the instant connection from a global perspective with distribution and content and marketing and media and product development, it's astounding. So I, I think the message that I would have to you is, you know, we're in business and we've got some amazing talent. We've got new context of who we are as a purposeful place, inspiring kids around the world um, through the wonder of toys and what you all do in the content and digital and creation world. And so I think the two combined could create amazing things that hopefully, you know, as my leadership team starts to dive into all of this, you know, eventually there'll be a new leadership team that looks at all the work that we did and says, wow, that was incredible. How do we keep it moving forward? Now, I know you said you can't divulge anything, but it will be fascinating to see how you reimagine such standards as, as Barney and Angelina Ballerina and all the others yeah. for a new generation. And equally, as, as ideas come from the international market, isn't it important today for children to see things that go beyond what they see in their home and what they see in their community? I mean, it's so important for them, even at a young age, to know that People live differently, people think differently, and that's okay, but they all play in the same sure. way, don't they? Well, and play is incredibly important. And you know, a place like Mattel, it's an incredibly global company. You know, there's, a, there's a huge percentage, and in fact, in some cases, uh, many of our brand's biggest business is outside the US. So we're becoming much more um, recognizing that while we have global strategies, we need local adaptation. And that may be inventing new local content for brands. You know, things that we perhaps never did because you know, that wasn't what we did. Now we're open to it and arguably even testing things. You know, risking, um, you know, perhaps it won't work. That's okay. My you know, sort of motto with our team is fail fast. Just get it over with. Right? But, but let's understand, you know, if you don't try, we're, we're never really going to know. So I think one of the things that the company did for a while was kind of sit back and while we were intelligently aware of everything that was going on, we weren't necessarily in the game and playing and trying and risking. We've got some great new toys. Maybe people heard about the Viewmaster where we're working with virtual reality and, and we've got Thingmaker, which is um, 3D printing, um, which is a reinvented toy. So there's a lot of interesting new things that we're doing that are risky, um, but I really do believe if you don't take that risk with a company like ours, you'll, you'll essentially um, fall behind. And today, particularly with who we're speaking to with kids, you, you, can't, you can't waste any time. So I think you're right. We've got to adapt you know, locally and think globally and, and move very quickly. Because kids are so smart. They, I mean, they've always been smart, but they're so media savvy and they're so into whatever is next. And very need, quick at adopting yeah. anything that's new. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, the future of our kids are in good hands then. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. All and right. thank you, Richard. Thank you guys very much.